Queen Elizabeth II is currently the longest reigning monarch in British history and has been in her position since 1952. The 93-year-old queen has sworn that she would never abdicate, so her 71-year-old son Charles is the longest waiting candidate for the throne. But despite her declarations, during her latest public appearance at the opening of the British Parliament, there have been subtle hints that the queen is withdrawing from the public life and letting her son take over. What are the signs that the queen may give up the throne? Will Prince Charles finally get the position that he wants so much? It's your boy Marky Mark here and stay with me to find out if the British monarchy will make history again. Can you believe that Elizabeth II has been reigning for 67 years? She has seen the war, her prime ministers have changed, as has her country. Today, the monarchy of the United Kingdom has more of a representational and ceremonial function. But did you know that the power that the Queen has is much bigger? Right now, according to the constitutionalists, the Queen has the right to be consulted, to warn and to encourage her ministers. She must have insight into the affairs of the state, hence her weekly meetings with the Prime Minister and daily delivery of documents from the ministers. In theory, the Queen is the head of the armed forces. She can declare war and make peace, terminate and conclude a treaty, establish and terminate diplomatic relations, and has the right of veto over bills and power of pardon. In reality, she uses these powers rarely or even not at all. And as a person who is supposed to unite the country to be above politics, she should never publicly express her political views. Elizabeth II sticks to the principle, the king reigns but does not rule. I wonder if Prince Charles remembers about that. So some of the important functions of the queen today are the opening of each new meeting of the parliament, appointing and dismissing the prime minister and ministers. That's why the most recent queen's speech has been discussed in the media. The queen delivered it in the House of Lords in the presence of the members of the House of Commons, and with this, she opened a new session of the parliament. It doesn't even matter that the speech was written by the members of the government. So the speech that Queen Elizabeth gave on October 14th in 2019 was a preview of the government's legislative plans and had already been her 65th speech in Parliament since the beginning of her reign. During her speech, Elizabeth II presented the government's plans for the new parliamentary session under the Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Among the most important issues, she mentioned Brexit, eliminating crime, protection of the environment and improvement of healthcare. And despite all these important things, the media paid attention to two completely different issues. The first thing is that the Queen didn't wear the crown. Up until now, Queen Elizabeth always appeared wearing a large crown studded with rubies, emeralds, sapphires, pearls, and diamonds. But this time, she showed up in a more modest and much lighter George IV diadem from the 19th century. The imperial state crown, which is considered a symbol of the Queen's power, was separately brought to the Parliament and laid on a pillow right next to the monarch. Apparently, the reason for this change was the fact that the crown weighs over two pounds and it's become too heavy for the not-so-young Elizabeth. Do you think that this is a sign that the queen is getting weaker and she soon won't be able to even speak in public? So will she stop representing her country and will pass her power to her eldest son? What may actually confirm this theory is the second hint from the ceremony, and it's the fact that Prince Charles was near the queen all the time and he even led her to the throne. The queen's husband, Prince Philip, who is now 98 years old, retired in 2017 and almost completely disappeared from the public eye. With the exception of an occasional drive around the neighborhood, but now he's also done with that. Anyway, the fact that Elizabeth II appeared at the opening of the parliament together with her eldest son, the media and experts saw as a clear sign that there soon will be a transfer of power. Do you think the queen will finally pass her title to her son and she will abdicate? Not so fast. It's not that easy because the queen believes that she should keep her title until her death. She started her reign when she was very young and she feels very attached to the position. On her 21st birthday, she announced that she would reign her whole life. She said then, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. And a good monarch always keeps their word. According to the polls, as many as 70% of the British people would prefer the Queen to remain in power for as long as she lives. The Queen takes her position very seriously. She considers it her duty and her life mission. She isn't thinking about abdicating because she can pass some of her duties to others. So even though it's been rumored that Elizabeth II would abdicate at the age of 95, it doesn't seem that it will happen. Recent media reports have suggested that over the next two years, the Queen will be passing more of her duties to Charles until the Regency Act is brought into effect. 
The Regency Act of 1937 is now the main act regarding Regency in Great Britain. Before it was decreed, acts were introduced only in specific situations, when the reigning monarch was unable to perform his duties or when he or she was a minor. The bill from 1937 allowed handing over the power at the time of a temporary indisposition and introduced general rules regarding the regent and established the office of the Councillor of the State. What's important in the event of using the Regency Act is that it's not the Queen herself who decides about handing over the power to the heir. The pass of the Regency Act, Prince Philip along with the Lord Chancellor, the Speaker of the House of Commons, and the two other government officials must agree together that there's enough evidence to support the Queen's request. So what will the whole thing look like? Queen Elizabeth II won't lose the title of Queen, but Prince Charles will become the head of the United Kingdom and he will be fulfilling all the duties. Has this happened before? A similar situation took place even before the adoption of the current act. It was in 1811 when the duties of King George III were taken over by the future monarch, his son. George IV had been a regent for almost 10 years and he became the king on the day of his father's death. So it seems that Prince Charles will become a regent and only after his mother's death, he will become the king. When Prince Charles finally receives the crown, he will be the oldest crowned king of Great Britain. But as I said before, Charles is not the youngest, so he will be able to enjoy the title and the function that he wants so much. And what will he do in the future? Because despite the rumors about his abdication and handing over the title to Prince William, maybe he will also use regency. Actually, Prince Charles is already performing many of his mother's duties, from public appearances on her behalf to official visits like representing her on foreign trips to Australia and New Zealand during the year of her Diamond Jubilee. But it seems like he still has to prove that he is worthy of this position because the opinions among the society are split. What's important is the case of Princess Diana, who is still remembered as the people's princess. But I'll talk about that in a moment. Let's start with the fact that at the beginning of 2019, BMG Research conducted a survey asking whether Prince Charles should abdicate and let Prince William be the king. 27% of the respondents said that they strongly supported the decision about abdication and 19% said they would be okay with it, which means that a 46% were for abdication. Only 13% were strongly against the abdication of Prince Charles and 11% slightly opposed the decision. About one in three surveyed people had no opinion on this issue. And what would you say? So can we say that such surveys and the public are what stops Queen Elizabeth II from abdicating? Is this why apart from giving many of her responsibilities to Charles, she also lets William and Kate to represent her more often? After all the press and the people love them. Many British royal family experts think that Elizabeth II believes that thanks to William and Kate, the monarchy will stay strong and will be modern and open. Do you think that the Queen is right? Well, it's obvious that Prince Charles hasn't had a good press for years. Much is said about his mistakes from the past, his affairs and weaknesses. In the eyes of the people, he's a ladies man with a huge ego and eccentric person with dangerous political views. It's expected that as a king, he won't be as respected and adored as his mother. People also doubt whether the prince, after taking the throne, will be able to stay neutral on some political issues as it's expected from the royals. Even the BBC documentary prepared for his 70th birthday didn't help Charles that much. It showed that behind the scenes of his everyday work and the prince revealed that the reports of his incorrectness aren't true because as a king, he would have to fit into the constitutional parameters. Even the relationship with his grandchildren didn't make him more likable because Prince William is still more appreciated by the public. Oh, and let's not forget about the thing with Camilla Parker Bowles. Even though she eventually became Charles' wife, she's still seen as the person who ruined his marriage with Lady Diana and who caused multiple problems and miseries of the princess. On almost every anniversary of Lady Di's death, Camilla is faced with the emotional and sad statements about looking for love and acceptance. There was a moment when it seemed that Harry and William blamed his father for a lot of things. Maybe that's why some Brits don't want to see the Duchess of Cornwall as their queen. And despite what her husband wants, it's very likely that after Charles takes the crown, Camilla would simply be the wife of the king. In a survey for the son, 36% of respondents were in favor of the solution, while 27% were for the title of queen consort, and 37% of the people had no opinion. That's why the Duchess of Cornwall is also working very hard to improve her image. Of course, regardless of what people think, 
the succession of the throne has already been decided by the law and tradition, and the queen, however she's feeling, is not immortal, and at some point she will have to slow down, and one day she will be gone forever. Therefore, regardless of whether the abdication takes place or not, more likely a regency in two years we may witness a historical event in Great Britain. After all, many people were born during the reign of Elizabeth II and don't remember any other monarch. Also, it's very unlikely that when Prince Charles takes this position, he will overshadow his mother. It seems that only William and Kate and their children have a chance to win over the public, and that's why the Queen believes in them so much. And what do you think about this? Do you think that Great Britain should continue to maintain the monarchy? Do you think that Prince Charles will be a good king, or maybe he will do something shocking to be remembered? Do you think William will be a traditional or a modern king? Let's talk about it in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with Curious Sips. See you next time.